everybody, Techie 101 here. Today's video is going to be about a certain topic that I was made aware to probably in early March, late February, right around when the information was uh, broken. I, I was pretty much uh, told about it in my answer time segments. I've gotten emails over it. People have talked about it in my live streams. And that is of the live action Bleach movie made by Warner Brothers. And for those of you who have not heard this news yet, no, I am not screwing with you, nor am I starting an alternate dimension fan fiction. This is something that, from the looks of it, is going to happen within the next few years. And it's, it's something that just doesn't sound right. You know, even saying what this thing is out loud does not sound right. It sounds like something that would exist in a parallel universe. An American live-action remake of a Japanese anime made by an American studio and with American actors. That just... That, that just spells doom, doesn't it? I mean, really, though, what is with these big-budget studios when it comes to making these live-action versions of something that really shouldn't be in live-action? <laughs> Alright, of course, yeah, I mean, pff, wow, that just... What, what was I thinking just now? Um, where was I going with this? Oh, right, I could start off this video by saying all of that, but I'm not because I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here. I mean, it's something that should not exist, but it's going to happen, so... Yeah, you know, I've been a fan of Bleach for six years. It's had its ups and downs, we can all agree on that. I review it every week. I've made enough, you know, jokes about how the writing or the plot is before. Um, all in good fun. I really try not to make myself look out to be a troll, but... <sighs> okay, let me, let me just start with this. The idea of transferring an anime into a live-action movie, that, that whole concept has never been... It's always been alien to me. I've never really thought... It, it seems like a question to an answer nobody asks kind of deal. Like, okay, when you were a kid growing up in the 90s, well, if you were a kid growing up in the 90s like I was, you know, sitting around 6 o'clock in the... I mean, 6 o'clock at night watching Toonami, uh, the original English dub of Dragon Ball Z comes on, you're getting really excited, Goku's taking on Frieza for the first time before we all know what everything's going to happen. At, at any moment, did you sit down and think to yourself, wow, you know what, I really wish this was made in live action with American actors in English. That would just make this whole experience complete for me. Okay, maybe you were thinking in English because you're a little kid and you don't want to read Japanese subtitles, I mean, um, English subtitles, but you know what I'm saying. Like, no one really asked for that to happen. They kind of just saw it and be like, you know what, this is really popular, and because the series is really popular, if we make a live-action movie about it, then that live-action movie is going to be just as popular. No! That's not how this formula works. We like the original series, okay? Which was made by other people. And this is kind of a problem when it comes to distribution rights. Um, as you're aware, um, Bleach is owned by a company in Japan because that's where the original manga is published. I believe it's, uh, I believe every manga published in Weekly Shonen Jump is owned by Shueisha. It's like a major publisher in Japan. It actually owns Weekly Shonen Jump. That's, that's how big it is, along with other magazines. But uh, that, uh, Bleach is owned by that in Japan, but the distribution rights, the people that are allowed to take that product and translate it in English and make an English dub would be, um, over here, would be Viz Media and Funimation. I don't know if they're like sister companies or like their parents or maybe like one owns the other, but those two are the big ones here in America. And then we get Warner Brothers Studios, who apparently has the rights to make a live-action remake or adaptation, however you want to say it. Uh, let me read an article about this um, from MoviesIGN.com. Bleach has built a huge international following in its manga and anime formats, and we're excited that Warner Brothers shares our belief that Bleach can also become a fantastic live-action film. Uh-huh. Bleach is an exciting opportunity to mix Japanese and Hollywood storytelling. <laughs> yeah, um... You guys have tried that before, and, I mean, I'm sure it's been done well before, but in recent years, no. No, no, no. But, uh, continuing, um, mix Japanese and Hollywood storytelling to create something new for the big screen, and we're, thrill and we're thrilled for the opportunity to further expose its unique characters and story to film audiences everywhere. Okay, so... After my fans told me about the whole situation, that there's going to be a live-action movie made by Warner Brothers, at first I didn't believe it. I honestly thought it was a joke, but then I did some research. This was the article I first read when I was reading about, you know, what was going on. And so far, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'm not, you know, way overexcited, like, you know, oh, yeah, I'm really excited for this piece, this masterpiece that's sure to uh, emerge. But, you know, 
they've done this before, and like I said, it's sometimes it's hit or miss. It, usually it's miss, but whatever, you know, okay, we're good so far. And then we get to the people that um, are thinking about directing and uh, producing the film, and um, this is the part that really started to concern me. First, we have Peter Siegel. Now, um, I've heard this name thrown around before. I didn't really know much about the guy. I know he was a director. I didn't really, you know, know much more about that. So I did a little bit of research on him. And uh, here are some of the films that he has directed over the years. 51st States, starring Adam Sandler. Anger Management, starring Adam Sandler. And The Longest Yard, starring Adam freaking Sandler. Uh, you know, um, if I ever thought I had to make a Venn diagram with one being Adam Sandler movies and the other one being Bleach. I always thought that that Venn diagram would never even come a light year from interjecting, but apparently they do. Okay, you know, I'm giving you guys the impression he only directed Adam Sandler movies. He has directed other stuff. Uh, he directed Get Smart in 2008 with Steve Carell. I really like that movie. Great actor, Steve Carell. Really funny. Uh, he's done other films as well, but here's the down, here's the gist of it though. The films that he's all done, that he's directed, they're all comedies, most of which starring Adam Sandler, but that's beside the point. Most of them are comedies. Now, here's the thing. Do you think that Bleach is a comedy? No, it's not. It, it's just freaking not. There are scenes in it that do have humor, mostly in the beginning in the first arc of Bleach, which maybe that's a hint they might be doing the first arc of Bleach. We're not really sure on that yet. Um, but it's just... It's just out of place, you know? I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying the guy's a bad director. Like I said, I like some of those movies. But it's just, it just doesn't seem right. Now, and when I first read about Peter Siegel's involvement in the movie, um, I read that he was going to be involved solely as a producer. Okay, so um, that's all right. I mean, producers aren't really involved with the making of the movie, uh, you know, at large. They're more involved with, like, overseeing the project, uh, delivering it to certain studios, uh, financing it. And that's, you know, pretty hands-off on the actual making of the movie. Uh, but then I read the article which said, producing with an eye toward directing. Now, as of yet, the movie doesn't have a set director. That really does worry me. I'm just saying. I'm not, I'm not bashing the guy. Like I said, I like a lot of his movies. I'm just saying that a director whose resume consists of nothing but comedy films directing a Bleach movie doesn't, doesn't seem that well foreboding. I mean, like I said, Bleach does have comedy scenes in it. But that's not what the whole series is about, like this light-hearted comedy romp with Ichigo going around and beating hollows. It's such a good old-fashioned time. Except for that time Mukiora blew a hole in his chest, or that other time that Toshiro stabbed Momo in the heart, or that other time when uh, Rukia was about to be executed. Yeah, that <laughs> really goes at my funny bone there, doesn't it? There is a little bit of hope that the boat has not completely sunk yet. There is a man that is in charge of the uh, screenplay for the film, and uh, I'm not, uh, forgive me for pronunciation, it's Dan Mazu, or Mazu, sorry about that, uh, whose resume includes, among other things, Wrath of the Titans. Okay, this is something I'm a little bit more excited about. Granted, it might not be exactly what I think about when I think of Bleach, but when I have a choice between this or this when comparing to Bleach, I'm probably going to pick the latter one. Alright, this is good. We're not completely sunk yet. This is not bad. Um, the rest of the article just focuses on explaining exactly what Bleach is to the, uh, the, the general public as well as explaining, you know, the sales and stuff in America recently, how like, the, it has exploded in terms of a cultural phenomenon over here. And, you know, that's another point, though. The fact that Bleach is not um, a huge successful phenomenon in Japan as it once was, and yet is growing in popularity over here in, in the States, maybe that does mean we should be, you know, making a live-action version of it, you know, just for the sake that it's more popular here. Maybe that's a thing. Um, like, I, I have seen other live-action versions of anime, and I remember liking them. The Death Note, uh, I remember the Death Note live-action adaptation. That was a really good work. Uh, I even like the English dub of it. And, and in fact, I like the English dub, uh, pretty, I, like, I, I, I like the story, but I also liked how they actually got the English actors that did, like, Light Yagami and L. They got them for the movie to dub over the actors' voices. Like, they got the characters from the anime to actually dub over the live-action, which I enjoyed, like the Death Note movies. Um... But I, I think, like, the reason I like the Death Note movies more is because it's more of a realistic setting. Like, the actual anime, I mean, supernatural stuff does occur in the anime, but not nearly as supernatural as, like, Bleach with, you know, you know Ichigo firing off, like, energy beams at a giant, huge, hollow monster, you know, or, you know, 
people firing laser beams or stuff. You know, the, the most supernatural you get in Death Note is just Ryuk or like seeing the Shinigami world and stuff. But it, 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 it works in live action, do you know what I mean? Um, then again, the Death Note live action film was made in Japan where they have a little bit more respect and uh, appreciation for anime, you know, instead of the uh, culture over here in America, you know, for the most part anyway. I know, I know there's people that actually do care about, you know, anime and stuff over here in America, but once again, Dragon Ball freaking evolution. It's kind of interesting though, you're like, what would happen if uh, we Americans made an English adaptation of Death Note? We'd probably try to shove in some, I don't know, cultural phenomenon to make it more relatable. Oh, wait a minute. I actually have a great premise for that right now. The Death Note plus Facebook. I'm a genius. I'm a genius. I deserve, I want to be, I should be the director. I should be the director of that movie. So that's all we have um, at the moment. The information on the film is extremely limited. Like I said, the, the announcement just came, um, you know, in February of this year, very recent. Uh, the screenplay isn't even, you know, probably close to being finished yet. Another interesting thing I read, though, is that they had the rights to, uh, to make a movie like Bleach for, I think, about two years, but they didn't. Uh, maybe because that's what maybe they were thinking like, oh, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should just leave well enough alone. It's a popular series in America. People are buying the volumes. Maybe we should just leave it the way it is. And maybe now that popularity has increased, it's just a natural progression. Um, so, you know, like I said, I have my concerns, but also I have my hopes that because this is such a, like, a cultural phenomenon and, and such a big thing over here, maybe they'll actually listen. Maybe they'll actually pay attention and make something that's pretty decent. Um, now let's talk about, you know, what exactly the plot and premise could be, because like I said, the screenplay's not even probably close to being finished yet, but, um, if, if, okay, let me, let me say it this way. Have you ever went to a movie before that you were really excited for? Like, you were really hyped up for this movie. You go and see it with a bunch of your friends, and it just turned out to be terrible. Or at the very least, it didn't turn out to be something that you expected. You think that this movie that you were so excited about deserved to be better. And when you're walking out of the theater, either you or your friends say, you know, oh, I could have made a better movie. And you know what I would have done if I made that movie? I would have done this instead of that. I would have had the story take place here instead of there. And, um, you know, you always have that conversation, like what you would have done different with the movie instead of, you know, what they actually did. So uh, let's have this conversation now before the movie even is created, really. Like, if you are a fan of Bleach in America and you're told to make a live-action Bleach movie... What would you do? Would you start at the beginning of the series? Would you start at the, uh, the, the substitute arc? Would you start in the Soul Society? Which characters would you include? Um, and and that, that's another thing, too. Uh, like, like, who would you include in this movie? And this is where a problem comes into fruition, because you're like, okay, well, Ichigo and Rukia, obviously, they have to be in the movie. They're the main characters. Um, oh, we also have to be Akia, because he's... Oh, we, oh, we also have the Grimjow. Oh, and Inokiura, too. Oh, we have to throw in Uohara, because, see, this is where we get into an issue here, because, I mean, just talking about characters like, you know, Byakuya and Grimjow and Ukiura, those characters, and eh, they don't show up for different parts in the manga for, like, spanning, like, three different arcs right there. So... You know, that, that's impossible. You, what, what are you going to do? You can't, you know, have the Substitute arc, Soul Society arc, and Arankar arc all in the same movie. That would, um, that would be a little bit to cram for a 90-minute time spot, unless it's like Titanic and four hours long, but I highly doubt they have the budget for that. Um, you know, it's just, it's just a thing like, what are you going to do? Are you going to make a sacrifice? Are you just not going to have these characters? Or... Um, are you going to have, like, take place in a whole never dimension altogether? Um, you also have to be worried about different staples of the series, like uh, Ichigo's Bonkai and Hollow Powers, for example. If you have the movie take place only in the Substitute arc, then he's not going to have those abilities. And if you show him having those abilities, then you're going to be like, oh, well, what happens when he goes to the Soul Society? Um... You know, it's just, it's just so many, so many issues and variables here to mess with this. Like, you want people that like the movie to, you know, be a fan of it, and, and you want people to like, be related with the movie, like, oh, he did that in the anime, or, oh, yeah, I can't, I, I, I like to see that in live action. Uh, every single time that, uh, that Hollywood makes an anime adaptation, or not even anime, anything that's not mainstream, anything that's adapting some kind of show or something into a big budget uh, Hollywood film, Probably the line I always hear the most, either like the director or the actors or whatever, probably the, the quote I hear probably the most often is, we're going to make this movie um, in such a way that any newcomer can watch it 
without being alienated or without being confused. And the, and the long-term fans can also enjoy it as well. Uh, that, that line has always changed, you know, somewhat. But basically, that's the, the, the gist. They want the movie to be appealing to both an audience that has never even heard of this before, like a newcomer, and an audience that's been watching the series for a long time. I wonder why they would be doing that. Yes, <laughs> once again, that's the only reason they're doing that. They want to pan to a larger audience so they can make more money. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I mean, they need money. If you want the movie to do good, if you want a sequel to occur, you have to make money. That's just a simple fact. But I I'm just saying it doesn't usually work that well. You, re you really can't appeal to both audiences. It's either you end up appealing to one or the other. Very rarely are you going to make a movie that any newcomer can just watch in and they can leave the movie and be like, you know what, I understood that movie completely. And... You know, the, the, the long-term fans would walk out and be like, Man, that was awesome! Bleach epic movie! Woo! They did every single thing I wanted. You know, very rarely you're going to get that. It's going to be one or the other either way. What I think they should do, if you care about my opinion, um, this is what I think they should do. I think they should do something similar to, um, uh, kind of like, uh, I'm not stealing here, I'm just doing an, like an idea. Um... There's a Naruto movie coming out recently, and um, it's not out yet. It's coming out, I think, later this summer. It's called Road to Ninja. And basically what it is, is it follows the Naruto plot, but it changes some of it around. It, it like takes place in a parallel dimension where it's like some of the characters are different. I think they should do something similar to that with the Bleach movie. Like, have the characters be the same, but maybe juggle the, um, the characters around a little bit to get everybody into the show. Uh, maybe you don't have to show the entirety of the substitute arc. Maybe you can maybe show like the first half hour, 45 minutes of the film being focused in the world of the living, um, being focused on how Ichigo got his powers and how he's fighting Hollows, and then maybe have Byakuya and Renji just show up earlier. Um, instead of in the anime when they didn't show up until like the 16th episode, maybe have like, uh, you know, Rukia and Ichigo meet Irukia gives him her powers. That has to be in the movie. That has to be. Like, how he gets his powers. Um, that's a given. And instead of just having, like, their whole adventures in the world of the living, you know, fighting off, like, Random Hollow of the Week, maybe right after Ichigo gets his powers, uh, we see Ruki, we see Renji and Byakuya descend. It's like, oh, well, we have to, you know, we have to stop this. That'll speed the plot along, and that'll give them to the Soul Society much faster. Um, that's another thing, too. Like, Soul Society, amazing set. And then maybe they can have their little adventures in the Soul Society, you know, speed up the fights, of course. Maybe still have the fights, but just, you know, establish them a little bit. Um, and then maybe at the very end of the movie, when everything's all good and resolved, maybe then you'll have, like, a one-shot of Ukiora and, you know, Aizen and Grimjow off in, like, another place, you know, like, well, we're invading. And if the movie does well, we'll get a sequel. But you have to be careful with this, okay? Um... So that's my idea of what they maybe should do with the movie. Maybe change around the plot a little bit to accommodate more characters. Um, you know, they might have to they might have to drop some people that aren't important, like side characters like Kago or Totsuki, perhaps. Um, it's it's all about balance. You know, it's like a 90 minute movie. You have to get you know if there's characters here, we have to understand who they are. You know, um, if they're going to do with that whole panning a wider audience sort of thing, which I'm pretty sure I'm fairly certain they're going to do. They haven't said you know outright that they're going to do it in this article. But the idea is pretty much established that they want this to be a wider audience, pretty much with everything they do. So, all right. Well, that's my thoughts on the Bleach movie. Um, I'll give you more information as it comes up. Um, I'm going to go see it, obviously. It might not be made for a couple of years. Uh, 20, I think they're aiming for a 2013 release. Is that what they said? 2013. If, it, if it's going to be 2013, it's going to be near the end of the year. It's probably going to be like a Christmas or something release because... Uh, depending on how long it takes to get them there. But uh, anyway, so uh, thanks for watching the video. These are just my ideas on the film in general. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Techie101 signing out.